guys, I'm Miriam and welcome to the Houston Zoo. I have with me Peter Rabbit, who is our baby red tail Ganon. So Peter was born almost six weeks ago on Easter weekend and he wasn't gripping the best to his mom and he wasn't feeling well. So we looked at how our vet staff looked at him and found out that he actually had a skull fracture. So we have been hand raising Peter uh, with our amazing vet staff and this amazing staff here at Houston Zoo. Um, with hopes to return him and reintroduce him to his mom. So currently with what our primate team is doing with Peter is he comes down on his field trips from our vet clinic down to the primate or the building that his, his mom and dad are in and gets to spend as much time as possible around the other monkeys. So that includes a lot of bottle feeding, a lot of produce feeding, and a lot of visual access to the other, other uh, red tail ganons. So normally, um, our red tail ganons will stay with their parents for um, the first couple years of life and will nurse for the first four or five months. Um, but currently, you know, Peter's using his bottle, but he actually can see his mom, Najiri, who is uh, inside with his dad, Kabali, right now. And they are very, very interested in Peter, and he's very interested in them. They make all sorts of great vocalizations to each other all sorts of chirps and chitters. Can you get some biscuit? Um, and they are very interested in him. And that's exactly what we wanna see because we're hoping to be able to put him back with Najiri, who's his mom, um, and then um, next month or so. Oh, did you drop it, bud? And she's showing every positive thing that we wanna see. She's so very interested in him. And here on exhibit, we actually have our other red tail Ganons. Right now you're seeing Jack, who's almost a year old. So this is what he's gonna look like in about a year. Starts getting those colorations that they're really well known for. And we have Bongo out here, who's our oldest red tail. She's 22 years old and she's the grandma for everyone. She's just, she's always the greatest at supporting each other and grooming. And then we have Nagano out here, who is Jack's mom. And they're showing, I think they're grooming. So you're seeing what they really like to do and their um, social interactions. So Brianna is asking us, does he play? And he plays a lot. When he's not sleeping or eating, he does his absolute favorite thing, which is jumping around like a bongo, like a, like a ping pong ball all over the place. And we also give him the types of enrichment we give um, the other monkeys to see how he acts with it. And his favorite so far has been the paper towel streamers, which he just rolled around in and jumped through. And Henna is asking what he like, what does he like to eat? Well, his favorite is he's actually eating it right now, which is oranges. He also loves banana and apples and carrots and sweet potatoes. And he gets a special biscuit that's made for primates that have his type of diet, but we soak it for him. So Rashonda's asking, how did we choose their names? So we choose their names a lot of different ways. But Peter's name came pretty naturally to him because, because he was born on Easter weekend and he was up at the clinic and we needed something to call him and it just kind of happened really naturally. Otherwise, we, we sometimes we have keepers that name him, we have uh, volunteers, things like that. So, but his name was very natural. Uh, Christina's asking if he is soft and he is soft. They have, they have soft fur all over their bodies, kind of like we have hair, it's just a little thicker. And the grooming is so important because it's how we he, they keep each other clean. And his mom would naturally groom him quite a lot. So when we have Peter out and playing with him during his exercise sessions, we make sure that we groom him and we look him over just like his mom would. So because his mom is so important and that's why we really, really wanna get Peter back with his mom because she's going to teach him how to be a monkey. And we can't really do that for him. And Paige is asking, why is he on a lovey? And that's a really good question, Paige, because Peter would naturally grip onto his mom. And that was one of the signs that we knew he wasn't feeling his best was because he wasn't gripping onto her very well. Um, but he they are naturally gonna grip onto something fuzzy and furry. So we can wanna continue that very natural behavior. And uh, Santera is asking, how big will he get? So a male uh, red tail Ganon typically can get to about uh, uh, seven to nine pounds. Oh, you getting, you getting, you bringing those snacks with you, huh? So seven to nine pounds. So he's going to get quite a bit bigger. And if you saw Jack and that's just what he's going to be in about a year. 
um, but he's got a lot more growing to do and he won't hit thank you he won't hit full maturity until about um, six five or six years old and so you're starting you see he's starting to get that white on his nose so it looks like a little heart that's actually very important in red tail ganons because they use that in their communication and they'll actually touch their noses together as a, a way of showing affection and his mom has a very, very good, lovely heart nose. So she's very distinctive that way. And he is so interested in the swamp monkeys right behind him who are foraging. So what we also have our swamp monkeys that live with our red tailed ganons. And their favorite thing to do is to dig around and forage for treats. So Virginia's asking, does he like people? Well, he knows that we have food and he definitely likes us for food. But we don't, we don't want to be seen as his parent. We, don't want to be, we just want to be seen as his caregiver and someone who gives him the treats because he doesn't make really good, he, primates don't make good pets. So he hopefully and thankfully is more interested in the monkeys than he is us. So Baker's asking how far can they jump? And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the exact distance, but I know they can jump pretty far because our guys love to jump around on the exhibit and jump from tree to tree um, and jump on the ropes and he, loves to jump. Peter is a big fan of jumping. He just springs around and he's getting braver and braver with his climbing and his jumping. And sometimes it makes us a little nervous, but that's because it's totally normal for him as a baby monkey. Do you see she got more treats for you? Do you want, oh, sweet, oh, it's carrots. <laughs> Hi, bud. Yeah, so sorry, he's talking to us so much. And Olivia's asking, are the other monkeys nice to him? And they are actually, we're seeing that, especially with his mom um, and his dad is they're very interested. They make these really sweet uh, chirps and chitters at him. And they're all very interested in looking at him. They don't have any physical contact with him yet, but they are going to, at some, we're hoping to get to there at some point. But so far they've, all we've seen is stuff that's very, very positive, which is exactly what we look for. And so he has this long tail that our red tail ganons are known for. And that's what you'll see hanging down from our other red tail ganons. And in red tail ganons, those tails can get up to 35 inches long. So they have a lot of tail that they're known for. And they use that to help themselves balance. And also, well, they use it a lot for grooming when they're being social. And uh, Nagato, who's out here, tails are her favorite thing. And she loves grooming tails. Sorry. Oh, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys again why he's not with his mom. So when, when uh, Peter was born, uh, he, we, he was found gripping onto his mom. And as the day went on, he just wasn't holding on very well. And she was trying her best to lift him back up and get him on there. Um, and we saw him trying to nurse from her as well. So it's all these positive signs, except he just wasn't able to grip. So when our veterinarian staff looked at him, he, he was a little dehydrated and they actually found that he had a skull fracture. So we think at some point he fell off of mom and hurt his head, but thankfully it's actually healing very well. So we, have, we haven't seen any negative uh, things associated with that. He's developing complete and acting completely normally. And that's why we're keeping him around mom in hopes that he'll go back with her. So Dana is asking what their average lifespan is and red tail ganons can live up to 28 years old um, in human care. So. Uh, we have ones at the beginning of life and we have some more um, senior citizens, which is Bongo. He's a little bit older, but she's doing absolutely great and is such, so, such a great you know, matriarch with Nagano that she really, they take care of each other. And so um, red tail ganons in the wild um, live in central, Af are found in central Africa and can be found in groups of up to 30 or 40 individuals that are going to have a single male, a group of females, and then their offspring. So all sorts of little little ones running around. So the mom is the one that mainly takes care of her offspring, but the other females do help. So sometimes they'll carry the young and they'll groom them and take care of them. And Landon is asking, how long does he sleep? He sleeps a lot because he's little and growing. And it's kind of like in human babies. We think that when they're sleeping more, we're hoping they're going through a little bit of a growth spurt but he's so curious about everything around him that usually after he eats, he falls asleep for a little bit, but then there's too much to see and do and he's right back up. 
So he spends most of his time sleeping at night while during the day he rests, but in between being active and being fed, which is totally normal for the red-tailed Ganons. Anna is asking if his head is sensitive and we have not really seen any sensitivity with his head. Um, we're, we're able to touch it and we, we groom him there. We'll use, a, we'll use our hands, but we'll also use little toothbrushes to kind of get those sensations for him. But thankfully he hasn't been too uncomfortable with it. And Paulina is asking, why does he have blonde hair on his forehead? And that's actually just part of the natural coloration in red tail Ganons. They're not all one color. So the different colors that are coming into his face that you're seeing in that blonde hair, which is a good eye to spot that, are actually him starting to get those um, more, those leave, losing his baby coloration and seeing more of what the adults will have. And so he'll get more of that along his forehead, that crown, and he'll also get more of those little mutton chops that you see on his cheeks because that's part of their, what they have on too. And he's getting that little heart nose as well. Oh, and it, it does work as a camouflage for them in the wild. So they're going to have darker coloration on top and lighter coloration on the bottom so that while they're up in the trees, they're not as visible to predators. And Ashanti is asking us if we trim their nails and we don't. These guys actually naturally will groom and take care of themselves. So if they need to, they'll bite off their own nails or they actually just get ground down on their climbing. And Pepper is showing one of her absolute favorite enrichment items. These are called clinker balls. And Pepper is a three-year-old Allen swamp monkey. And she is full of beans. She is super playful. And that's why she loves having little Jack around. And she's going to love having Peter as a playmate as well. And Crystal's asking, what is he on? And he is on a little stuffed animal that we give him so that he has things, he has fur to grip onto, like he would grip onto on mom. And that keeps his strength up, but also makes him very used to the fact that it's a natural behavior he wants to do, but also that once he goes back with mom, he'll know exactly how to grip onto her. Pepper is very excited about these balls and hopefully at some point he'll get to play with them as well down the line once he's a little bit bigger because Jack, Jack and Pepper usually spend their time chasing and going after each other. Stephanie is asking if red-tailed Ganons are endangered. Now, red-tailed Ganons specifically aren't endangered. They're um, a species listed as least concerned, but they are threatened by deforestation. And that deforestation is mainly caused by mining for a mineral called coltan. Um, so if you've, if you've listened to us talk about this before, coltan is a um, mineral that is, makes up a microchip found in our cell phones and our small rechargeable electronics. And that's mined in these guys' habitat. So the best thing you can do to help save red tail Ganons like Peter in the wild is to hold on to your technology longer. Um, don't upgrade every single year, but when you do, you can actually recycle these devices. You can bring them here to the Houston Zoo. Um, you, can also, um, you can also mail them to us, but that recycling means we take that microchip and it goes back in the manufacturing process, which means we don't have to, we don't have to go in and mine it from their habitats. And Zach is asking, do they become attached or affectionate towards their keepers? Uh, we like to think we're able to build relationships with all of the animals we take care of. We would rather have them be attached to each other and really see themselves as primates because that's what they are. Um, but they do enjoy having us around. They enjoy us because we give them food. We build these relationships because you're silly because it helps us take better care of them with training um, for medical treatments and able to actually know how their health is doing. Amanda asks, how will you reintroduce him back to his mom? And that's a good question because that's going to be a process that we're working on. So our hope is to slowly introduce him where they can have some physical contact, but not much just to make sure it stays positive through mesh. Um, like you see here that will be inside in their bedrooms. And then slowly we'll introduce him to spending more time potentially in with her. And then from there, maybe, and then introducing to his dad and the other red tail Ganons. Um, but during that process, we are still going to be um, supplementally feeding him. So uh, he knows to come to the bottle and it's working with her to make sure she's comfortable to bring him up or allow him to come up to us as well. So we have bottles inside that she always sees, that Nigeri always sees, so that she's desensitized to it and it's not something that's scary to her. You are, he's... He's doing very well gripping because usually as he wakes up more, he is just jumping all over the place. He's thinking about it though, we'll be honest. So, um, oh my goodness. And so as you would get with any kid, he is starting to get his teeth in. 
And so you'll see he actually likes to chew on certain types of enrichment. Um, and Layla's asking, how is his vision? And I can't say for sure, but I think it's pretty good because he definitely sees us coming. He sees the bottles. He will focus on the other monkeys and look at them as well. Um, so he definitely is checking out the world around him and he's able to see that at um, almost six weeks old. And so it's great because it means he can actually look and identify the different foods that we're offering him. His hand-eye coordination isn't the best yet. He's working on it. So that's why we're ending up hand feeding him a lot. So because we're hand rearing him and we're holding on to him, I know a lot of people are wondering if monkeys make good pets and I can tell you wholeheartedly no. Um, not just the amount of work that we have to put into his daily care. Uh, believe me, they are very messy. Um, but also for, uh, and for our health and safety because he is teething, he's getting teeth. Um, and that we can get sick with what they have, they can get sick with what we have. But in, most importantly for him, because he's a monkey, he's not a human, he's not a domesticated animal. So he needs to learn how to be a monkey from his mom, which is why he spends as much time as possible around our other primates so that he can learn from them. And that's why we're really hoping to get him back with mom as soon as possible so she can keep teaching him how to be a monkey and how to socialize, how to groom, what to eat, all those sorts of things. And Renee is asking, where do they live and what are their predators? So uh, red-tailed ganons are found uh, throughout Central Africa. Um, starting in the Democratic Re Republic of the Congo and um, the, all the way east. And their main predators are, it's a type of hawk eagle? It's a type of eagle, and then there's also some cats around. So they have predation from above and below, and that's why that coloration is so important with camouflage, is that dark on top makes it hard to see in the trees, and the light on bottom makes that hard to see from below. Oh, you're getting that. So he is not as interested in his biscuits as he is his produce because just like us we like the treats better than all the nutrition and Galilea is asking um, do we give him baths and we don't actually give him baths we will groom him and look him over and make sure he doesn't have anything stuck in his fur if he does we'll actually take um, a wetted uh, cotton swab and we'll wipe off whatever might be on him and we'll kind of kind of pick at his fur and groom him around like his mom would. So he's going to be used to that when he goes back to her and she's grooming him a lot too. Uh, but thankfully they end up, tend to keep themselves very clean. And Sherry is asking, could they get COVID-19? And we don't have any scientific evidence as of yet um, of having uh, COVID-19 jumping into primates, but because they are so closely related to us, it's always a possibility. And that's why we've taken a lot of extra security precautions um, as primate keepers. So we're always wearing masks and gloves around our animals. We're minimizing our contact and our distance, um, but also making sure that we continue to give them the highest standards of cleaning and diets and health and safety as possible. And that's one of the, oh, and we are wearing our smocks, which is what we do because we have to handle him so closely that we aren't bringing him in contact with our uniforms. Um, so all sorts of protective gear just to make sure that anything we have, they don't get either. And we do that year round because we don't want to get any of our primates sick if, if we're not feeling the best. You're holding on so good, bud. He's, he's given us that face he gives us with those, those lips. And Sophia is asking if they mate for life. So they actually will live in large social groups that have one male and multiple females. Um, so it's going to, um, the males will actually leave their family group when they hit maturity, typically around uh, five to six years old, and they'll sometimes form up bachelor groups. But as males uh, get bigger and stronger, they might challenge the other males that have those groups of females and take over. Um, or as they, you know, if they get older and they pass away, another male will come in. And Nolan is asking what other animals we hear now in the background. And right now you're hearing our Siamang. Our uh, Siamang are very, very loud singers, and they are vocalizing actually inside the building right now. Um, and I'm glad you guys can hear it too, because believe me, you can hear it from across the zoo, even when you're here. They like to make themselves known. And he actually does not mind their singing at all. He has actually not reacted to it and will fall asleep and stay asleep while they're singing. So I think he finds it very lolling, which I don't, but 
he he can sleep through anything. Yeah, I'm gonna get that out of the way. <laughs> so Jack is doing actually doing a really good job holding on, and you're seeing how he normally will grip with his feet, his back feet, and he'll grip with his hands. And sometimes he'll bring his tail around, but usually he just lets that hang out right behind him. And this is totally how he would grip onto mom as well, just a lot more vertically. So when we do exercise sessions uh, with Peter, I think I called him Jack, sorry, Peter. Um, we'll actually play around with the stuffed animal and help him, you know, make sure he's gripping like he normally would, but also make sure like, you know, oh yeah, you gotta try, you gotta work for it and make him work for it, but then also allow him to jump around and climb and explore the world around him. So usually he gets to exercise uh, either inside in one of the bedrooms that um, the monkeys would normally have access to, or we actually bring him out here so he can get used to the exhibit and the substrate um, and everything there is to climb on. And he really likes it when he gets to come outside and he loves climbing on the logs and jumping and picking up every leaf he can possibly find and seeing if that's something he could eat too. And that is, that's something that mom is gonna teach him even more is what's good to eat and what's not. So for now, we're just giving him the good stuff, but mom will be a great, Najiri's gonna be a great teacher for him to see what he's gonna wanna eat. You're still gripping great, buddy. And now he's gonna start entering that time where he is ready for a nap because he's got a full tummy, which is always what he's looking for. And he also drinks water when he's inside too. He's got a special bottle that he'll drink water from and he's learning how to use that. So I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in to us here at the Houston Zoo Live and letting me talk to you guys a little bit about Peter and getting to meet the other monkeys that he's gonna to get to live with. And if and we would love it if you enjoyed watching us and you wanna help us save animals in the wild, you can donate to the zoo's emergency fund. I'm sure we have a link to it. And then if you join us tomorrow at 11 a.m., you can get another Facebook Live to learn more about the awesome animals we have here at the Houston Zoo and to see how we're saving animals in the wild.